The atlatl in Alaska. So what is an atlatl? An atlatl is a device used to aid in the throwing of a dart or spear. They are also called spear throwers and throwing board. The spear that is thrown is not really a spear, it's more of a dart, so that's the term that I'm going to use throughout the rest of this presentation. A brief history of the atlatl. The atlatl is one of the first weapons humanity ever invented and was used all around the world during the last ice age. It's been used for over 20,000 years. However, at the end of the last ice age, many, many groups stopped using the atlatl in favor of a bow. In the north, the atlatl continued to be used and improved upon in a couple ways. Uh, we think it's been continued to be used in the north because it's easier to use from a kayak-like boat. That brings me to who and how it was used. The Alaska Native groups that use the atlatl are Yupik, Yuganix, and Sukbiak. Sorry if I messed one of those up. The Alaskan style differs from most of the other styles of atlatl in that it's short and flat, and the big difference is the dot or spear that is being used. Uh, in, here in Alaska, it was normally between 4 and 5 feet long and had a very heavy tip at the front. Most other places and throughout history, the spears and dots were between 6 and 8 feet long. Think that the spear was shorter here because, well, it's being used from a kayak and you had to store more of them on a kayak. The main use here in Alaska was hunting seals from a kayak. However, our book does mention spearing caribou in the Yupik section. Just thought I'd mention it. So how is it used by Alaska natives today? Well, it's mostly used in a traditional sense. But many, many people use guns in favor of the atlatl now. Those who still use the atlatl claim that when you hit a seal with an atlatl, it's less likely to sink into the water after it dies than if you shoot it. Uh, nowadays, it is no longer used from a sitting position, it's used from a standing position at the bow of a boat. Now I would like to play a video of a native song and dance from the Yupik people. It is the story and song of seal hunting. First it shows the seal out on the ice, then it shows the hunters paddling up, then it shows the hunters using the atlatl. I am just going to play the last part of that video because it is five minutes long. I will put the link at the end of my presentation. So, this is how I made the traditional style. There are many, many ways to make the traditional style. I was just using the tools that I had. So, the first thing I did was I went and I found some wood in my yard. I was just pulling it out of the woods and then flopping it on the ground. The next step is going to be to prepare the wood. This means removing all of the branches and then stripping the bark off. And then I put it in a boiler room overnight just to try to dry out the wood a little bit. That that's not entirely necessary. The next step is get your basic shape down. Um, this is pretty quick, and it is usable at this point, but it feels like you're flinging a massive stick around because you're basically flinging a massive stick around. So the next step is to refine your design, take off wood where it needs to be taken off. Normally, what you want to have is you want to have a good amount of wood in your handle so that it's nice to hold, and then you want uh, as the least amount of wood possible between that and where the spear attaches, but then at the end, you want a bit more weight so that when you fling it, more force goes into the atlatl. So step five is putting in the bone spur. The bone spur is the part that the spear rests against and is what takes and transfers most of the energy from your body to the atlatl, then to the spear. It's very important. I mounted it in this picture in an upright position. I later changed this to a in line with the groove position. I found that to work better. So have fun throwing a dart. 
The dot in this picture is just one of the sticks that I showed earlier. I just put duct tape fletchings on it, and I didn't put a point on it, and it was flying. Okay. I did eventually break it. How to make a modern one. Step one is to find a design and get the dimensions. I had a very hard time with this. I, could, I was unable to find an online source that had good dimensions of just the dimensions of all the pieces that I need to know to make it. It had overall size for a couple places. Uh, what I ended up doing is I found an image online with a reference thing in the background and I lined a reference line up with that and then used that to calculate all of the dimensions. That ended up being way too small and I had to just throw out my first adder that I made of the modern one. And then, so I just put this here. This is a hand-drawn sketch that I did. Uh, the upper number is if you have small hands, it will work for you. The lower number is if you have bigger hands, then you make, make the bigger version. Your fingers will thank me. So step two is to then draw that design on whatever board you're going to use. I used a one inch by four inch finishing board made of pine. Uh, the spears that I made were out of a poplar dowel and a one inch oak dowel as a weight in the front. And then you also want to drill out the finger hole now in just a straight down hole. I used a drill. So then you want to uh, carve out the groove. I did this using a chisel and a dremel. The dremel was just to shore it up at the end to make sure everything was flush. It went pretty quickly. Um, there, I'm sure there's other ways to do it. That's just how I did it. The next step is going to be cutting the basic shape out of the board and then doing a rough sanding of, of the board so that you get it in a pretty good shape. Then you want to cut it out the rest of the way, do some more sanding, and then you want to widen the hole that your finger goes into. Uh, you want to make a very big flare out on the bottom so that your finger rests comfortably in there, and then you also want to widen the hole overall so that your finger can fit through. I used a Dremel for this because it was pretty fast. I was just using a sanding bit. So now, the next step is optional. You can stain it or finish it, or you can just leave it as raw wood, and you can just move on to the next step. So this next step is the final step, once again. you It is installing the bone spur. The bone spur is the part that transfers the first to the spear. It's very important. I later went back and reshaped this so that it had a slight curve to it, so that it released the spear evenly instead of flipping it down and hitting uh, the top of the spear. It's very important that this is done correctly, otherwise the spear will not fly correctly. I just glued this in with 5 minute epoxy is how I did it. And I'm use the bone I'm using is antler from the pet store. So now you can go try throwing a spear with your modern one and see the difference between the two. Well, I, you could. But let's go over how to actually use it first. So how to use it. The thing is, most of your fingers go on top of the spear, and you let go when you're about halfway through your swing. This causes a problem of maybe letting go of the atlatl and throwing it off into the distance. One of my friends did that with mine. Um, what I say is, before you bring out a spear, just try flinging it a few times. You want to try to pinch it between your index finger and your thumb. There's a thumb groove that's made into it also. You can see that in the top picture and just try holding it and flinging it around without actually throwing it like shown in the left picture. So how you want to use the atlatl is you want to transfer all your weight to one foot and then you want to just twist your body slightly while going forward and then release the dot. As I mentioned before the main use here in Alaska was from a kayak in a legs forward in front of you position and then just throwing while sitting. So to do that, you just want to twist your body slightly and then release with the wrist just by flicking it. As shown here. Now I'd like to share some art that includes atlatls and spears that my family has collected at different craft shows since we've lived here in Alaska. The first is this.
This one is the most interesting to me. Uh, you can see a very slightly carved atlatl before the harpoon that they were using. It's very small, but it's still there. Now I would like to move on to something a little bit different. So there's still ongoing research into atlatls in relation to Alaskan natives. So the Klingits also used atlatls. However, the reason I didn't mention this earlier is because the technology has not been used in a very, very long time. And what we do know of it, there are only museum pieces. And according to the article from the Smithsonian that I got this information from, there are only 14 pieces in existence. Um, recently, in 2017, so I guess not that recent, um, the Smithsonian uh, did a CT scan on their two Klingit atlatls that they had. And previously, they we, it was thought that these were decoration pieces because there was so much elaborate carving that they would probably break if they were used. But the CT scan showed that they were actually held together by bits of metal on the inside. So by this process, uh, it is some historians' hopes that they can restore this ancient technology back to the Klingit people. So, how is it still used today? And just wrapping up, um, overall, atlatls are s still used by some Alaskan native hunters, mostly in a traditional sense. Um, the majority have switched to using guns. So, it's not super popular anymore for hunting. But, it is gaining popularity and has been for a while now as a recreational and competition skill. Uh, back in 85, the Worldwide Atlatl Competition Foundation was formed in Europe, and it's just been growing in popularity since then. Uh, the Alaska Native Heritage Center holds an atlatl competition each year. I don't think they did it this year because of coronavirus. Uh... The picture to the left is of the 2017 competition. So if you have an interest in woodworking and this looks like fun, I highly recommend it. It's pretty easy to do. It has a good amount of room for error and you have a fun product in the end that you can go do competitions with or just throw in your yard like I'm doing. Now I'd like to share the rest of that video that I didn't play in the middle. It was just a bit too long. So here's the entire video in one go.
So my sources. This is just all the different sources I used. You know, you gotta you gotta include this in all the presentations.